When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. <laughs> Going to make a lovely pie, Luther. No you said it, Belfry. There's no other way to be. Well, we picked this limb clean. Wait, there's one more on the end. I'll get it. Not that apple, lambs. We've got plenty. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. But that's the shiniest one of them all, Luther. And we're going to get it. Come on. But Theo said not to. Ah, what he don't know won't hurt him, will it? Animals just like humans. You tell them one thing and they go and do just the opposite. Here are a few examples. Didn't your mum ask you to clean your room? It's pleasing to God when children obey their parents. Ahem. Did you know that it pleases God when we are kind to others? Did you know that it pleases God when we read the Bible each day? Aren't you forgetting something? You get the idea. Jesus said that if we love him, we would obey his word. Obeying his word means reading the Bible to learn what pleases God and then doing it. Jonah knew what God wanted him to do, but instead of obeying, he ran away. Let's take a look at his story in our shoebox Bible theater. In the days of the kings of Israel, God spoke to Jonah, saying, Go to the great city of Nineveh and cry out against it, for their wickedness is great. But Jonah said, No way! Rather than obeying the Lord, Jonah ran from the Lord and caught a ship bound for Tarshish, which was as far from Nineveh as Jonah could possibly go. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty storm, so that the ship was about to sink. The sailors were afraid and called out to their gods, Help! Then they threw out the cargo to lighten the load, but it looked very grim, and the sailors were filled with fear. But Jonah had gone down below and was taking a nap. Wake up, sleeper, and call on your god. Maybe he will save us. Jonah told him that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord and that they should toss him into the sea. The sailors didn't want to do that for fear of the Lord. But they did. Now the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah cried out to the Lord because of his affliction. And God heard him. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it spit out Jonah onto dry land. 
Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, telling him to go to Nineveh and preach to them about God's judgment. This time Jonah obeyed. As he walked through the streets of Nineveh, he saw that it was truly a wicked city. Yet forty days and Nineveh will be overthrown, he said to the citizens. And amazingly, the people believed God. Even the king was sorrowful and commanded everyone to turn from their sins to see if the Lord might forgive them. So Jonah sat on a hill overlooking the great city. Now he knew that the Lord was gracious and merciful and would forgive them, but he was angry because he wanted the Ninevites to receive judgment. But God did indeed show them mercy. Now it was very hot, and as the sun beat down on Jonah, he grew faint, so that he thought he might die. And the Lord made a plan to shelter Jonah from the heat of the sun, and Jonah was very grateful for it. The next morning, God prepared a worm, and it damaged the plant so that it withered. And Jonah was angry about the plant. God asked Jonah why he was angry about the plant withering, but cared nothing for the people of Nineveh. Then God said, Should I not show pity to the great city of Nineveh, whose people have never heard the word of God? And so it was that Jonah learned that God is a merciful God who loves all the peoples of the world. If only Jonah had obeyed God's word from the beginning, he wouldn't have had to spend three days and nights in the belly of a great fish as a seaweed sandwich. Obeying God's word is not difficult if we truly love him. We know that God is good and that he loves us and wants only what is best for his children. We can trust him and we can trust his word. Hi, this apple has a worm in it. Oh no, there's a moral to this story somewhere. Trust and obey. If we say we love God, then we'll obey him. Yeah, and I've got the aching back to prove it. 